I have flown. I have sailed. I have moved about this world of ours, ever in search of the finest of its kinds. We will bring you to the tops in spying chillers. What was once the creaking door is now Dagon's Vine Productions. Leave me, friends. Dagon's Vine Productions. The creaking door is open. So, do come on. Feel the chill of these winter evenings? Wait until you're with us, little. You'll freeze with fear. This was once upon a time a cigarette ad. Dagon's Vine Productions here. Yeah. You gotta get Dagon's Mind Productions. If you like the content I did here, yeah, make sure you hit that subscribe button. If you've already hit your subscribe button, make sure you hit the little bell icon, so this way you can get all the update content at the soonest available moments. And if you have already done that, take a moment, hit that little like button, you know? Like, 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 like. Let us know what you thought of our rendition in the comments below. In the grave, the cemetery caretaker trembling young men in an odd pair as they stand by an open grave under the pale moon. In the grave itself is a coffin. The lid has been pried open, and inside, the corpse of a middle-aged man. The caretaker warns. I've heard about blokes like you. Read about grave robbers. I never thought I'd come across one. Here, yeah. I'll I'm send for the cops, young man. Don't you try any rough stuff. I'm a match for you any day. But you don't understand. I tried to save his life. Now it's too late. Now, don't you give me that. This fellow was given a decent Christian burial. Now you've desecrated this! Desecrated, you say? Isn't it desecration to bury a man when he's still alive? Eh? What's he talking about? You don't think people go around being buried alive these days, do you? I don't know what to make of you. I watched you this afternoon. I thought you looked a bit... peculiar. I didn't know what you were doing at a pauper's burial. He shouldn't have had a pauper's burial. He shouldn't have been buried at all. I could have saved him. You better think up a good story. Something told me you were up to no good. Nah, don't you try any rough stuff! I already warned you! I watched you! The police are on their way! Breaking open a coffin like that! Heh! <laughs> I knew you were up to something, but I never thought... It's because... It's because... I let him get buried alive. And I was ashamed. I let him get buried alive for a measly 50 quid. And now he's dead. Hey, did you come out of a loony bin or something? Now that I get a better look at you, you don't look like uh, no grave robber. I'm not. Listen! What's he to you? This, uh, fellow we buried today? Nothing! Except I'm responsible for his death! I touched him! He's cold. Cold as death. He's only been in the ground, uh, a few hours. They don't stay cold like that. Sometimes we get a exhumation order. Gotta dig him up. You'd be surprised how cold they get. He's dead, isn't he? 
I brought this mirror with me. There's no breath. Look. <laughs> I don't have to look. He's been in the municipal mall for two days. He's been given a pauper's burial. Now then, what's this all about, young man? I want to go home. He was dead, all right, when they buried him. But not when the ambulance took him to the morgue. You see, I know. You know, oh, was he a relative of yours? I didn't even know he existed until two days ago. I've been trapped in the streets, looking for work, and didn't want to go home. If you can call that one room Lil and I occupy a home. It was still ringing in my ears, the things she shouted at me as I left there. I've come to the end of my tether. I've pawned everything. Look, look, even the wedding ring you got me slipped on my finger in the church. What did he say? All of my worldly goods. Ha! That's a laugh. You were going to share all of your worldly goods, weren't you? Well, if you don't get some money or a job, I'm walking out on you. Do you hear? I'm walking out on you and I'm going to go live with my sister. At least I'll get some walk and three square meals a day. Oh, don't say that, Lil. Was it my fault that I fell sick and couldn't work in the factory anymore? I tried, dear. I really have. Everywhere I go, they look at me and they say, no vacancies. Not my fault either. I warn you, I can't take much more of this. I know, honey. I know. I'll get something today. I promise. It was a promise I couldn't keep. Pounding the pavement, watching the dislike and fear in the eyes of the world as I passed by. Fear that one day they might become like me. And then I see him. I, I was coming to Duke's Lane. Nothing on either side except a huge brick wall. He was a short, fat little man. Our steps blurred in the quiet thoroughfare. What was he stopping for? Was he taking caution? Did he think me a gangster or something? I suppose I looked like something that I crawled out of a piece of cheese. seem to be any breathing. I wonder who he is. He must have something in his pocket. Blimey! Look at all this money! Must be 50 quid here! Poor swine. What good is his money now? I'd better call a cop. Well, There's nothing anyone can do for this poor swine. Job. I'll find him Get soon enough. Here. I'm walking out. What does a guy do in a case like this? Ah, beat it, you fool. Beat it with the first decent money you've had in months? Somebody will find him. Run! Thanks for watching, everyone.